Well, I, I met Gerald. Um, I met him when I was 19, he was 24. But, but Gerald was on the fire department when he was in high school. He was 15 years old when he started volunteering. And he graduated from Carmel High School in 1945, went into the Navy, was in the Navy for two years, came home and went to Butler University for a couple of years. And then he went to work for uh, Grain Dealers Mutual Insurance Company and became a special agent for them. Um, he had had an interest in fire department, in the fire department since he was a little kid. And whenever the fire siren, siren would blow, Gerald was there. And so he would follow the truck and so forth like that. So he had always been interested in it. I was at Purdue, went to Purdue University. I was there for two years. And then we kind of ran out of money and so I came home to work and then I was going to go back to school. And um, I came home and met Gerald Adams and I never went back to school. And he had, uh, he, when he met me he thought, oh good, she's been working, she's got money. And he told me he wasn't going to get married until he had $5,000 in the bank. So when he asked me to marry him I thought, oh good, he's got the money. We were both wrong. When Gerald was on the fire department, they got paid $2 for each run that they made. And uh, they had a lot of, fire, of uh, grass fire runs. And, uh, but if there was no run, there was no pay. Uh, at that time, uh, most of the time, Gerald was on. Uh, Donald Swales Jr. was the fire chief. Um, Jim Martin was on the fire department. Charlie Martin, J.K. Martin, Skip Clark, uh, Peanut Hoyt, uh, Paul Platt, uh, Hodges. Gerald became fire chief, I think, in, in 1960. And um, when, when Chief Swales went with the sheriff's department, and my husband was um, assistant fire chief at that time, so then he became fire chief. And um, he took his duties very, very seriously. If we were going to, had a little trip planned on a Sunday or, or a weekend or something like that, and if Gerald found out that there weren't going to be very many firemen in town, he didn't go. And that didn't make his wife all that happy but he was very, very dedicated and he was not about to leave the town of Carmel unprotected. So my plans went by the wayside. It was the fire department that uh, determined our life and, and how it was going to be. If the uh, siren rang in the middle of the night, Gerald would, of course, run over there. Uh, I acted as a dispatcher and I would go too. I think they started building the, the fire station in probably in 1951, in, in the early uh, part of 1951. And the way they raised funds, they went door to door and collected and they, they got money from the, from the merchants. But it was strictly a volunteer department and there was no budget for them. And so they raised the money for that. The guys did it themselves. Um, uh, I don't know who drew up the plans, but the labor, they did it. And they worked very, very hard, long hours, but they enjoyed every minute of it. And it was a, it was a community affair. When we got married, we built our house at, at 131 First Avenue Southwest, and it was across the street from the fire station and the, our sidewalk angled so that he could come out the front door, run over to the fire station, go in the front door and be there and get his helmet and, and his coat and boots on and drive the truck. And if he didn't get to drive the truck, it wasn't a good day. There were two main streets. Main Street going east and west, Range Line Road going north and south. 
and uh, there was a, a drugstore on the corner uh, and uh, a bank. There was a movie theater uh, just a little bit about a block uh, south on Range Line. Um, there was one school and all 12 grades were in this school in the vicinity of, of the high school now. There were three or four grocery stores. There was McMahon's grocery store, there was Cox's Market, um, Horton's Meat Market, uh, there was a, uh, Jewett's had a men's store, uh, Jane Haynes had a uh, women's store, um, there was a tavern on the corner, um, there was John Cook had a, gro uh, a restaurant uh, on Main Street, South Main Street, and the story is that uh, he was operating on kind of a tight budget and so if somebody came in and ordered bacon and eggs, if he didn't have any bacon or eggs, he'd run across the street to the grocery store and get it, come back and fix it. Life was pretty, uh, I, I shouldn't say mundane, but people knew what everybody was doing. And when my, uh, my husband traveled, he was a salesman for an insurance company, a uh, special agent actually, and so if he was going to be gone, and my parents were still living here, and we were just newly married, and so sometimes I would go stay all night at my parents, which was the Friends Parsonage, and uh, so I would call the telephone operator and say, if Gerald calls tonight, send the call to my parents' home. So we had call forwarding in 1950s, uh, long before anybody knew we had call forwarding. Um, you didn't want to say anything on the telephone that you didn't want everybody in town to know because uh, the operators, if it got a little bit uh, boring and they would uh, kind of listen in a little bit. And so my husband tells the story that when he was dating, if he would uh, be looking for a date and he would call Shirley and Shirley wasn't home and then he'd call Charlotte and Charlotte wasn't home, the operator would come on and say, well, Gerald, uh, Shirley's over at so-and-so's house, or so-and-so is home tonight, you might try them. So um, we had a dating service then, too. There was a fire in home place, and it, the, the whole house was destroyed. And he tells the story that there was a uh, a picture of Jesus on the wall, and that picture was not burned. Seems like just about everything else in the house burned, but that did not. Uh, I always, of course, worried when he was out on a big fire like that, that he might fall through the roof or something terrible would happen, and nothing happened to, to Gerald or to any of the firemen until the wreck that uh, killed uh, Skip Clark. And that was the most uh, devastating thing that happened. My husband and Skip were very close friends and, and that just about ruined my husband. He, he really never got over Skip's death. City Center Drive was named. It used to be Adams Street. And when they were going to change it to City Center Drive, I decided I wanted those signs because the St Adams Street had been named for my husband, Gerald Adams, when he was fire chief. So I wrote a letter to the street commissioner, uh, David Klingensmith, and I'd known David since he was knee high to a grasshopper. And David told me I needed to write a letter to, to Mayor Brainerd, tell him why I wanted the street signs and that maybe I'd get them. So I did, I wrote the letter, then I hand delivered it to the mayor's office and Mayor Brainerd was in the office at that time. So I got to talk to him and I told him who I was and the story that my husband had been fire chief, that I had been a dispatcher on the, the volunteer fire department and that the street was named for my husband and that I wanted those two signs because I had two sons and I was gonna give them to him. 
And he said, I think we can arrange that, but I'll let you know. So several weeks later, I got a call from the mayor's office saying this, I could have the signs and to come over. And they wanted to get a picture of me with Mayor Brainerd and, and uh, Chief Doug Callahan. So I went over there and I got the picture, got the signs, and my sons have them. There's also a street, Clark Street, that was named for Skip Clark. And Skip was uh, on the fire, fire department and he was killed uh, on a fire run. I have two sons. Gary and Ned, and we lived in Carmel until 1963. And so my boys grew up going over to the fire station and uh, being with their dad and all that. My father was a minister, and they, at this time, they lived in California. They were coming back for a visit, and Gary, my oldest son, was uh, two years old, three years old. He was three years old. And the week or so before my parents were to arrive, Gary was there at home and he slipped and fell and he said, <laughs> and I said, Gary, what did you say? And he told me what he said. And I said, you must never say that word again. I could just see my parents walking up on the porch, opening the door, and the first thing out of their darling grandson's name, mouth, was that word. So Gary went around saying, I'll never say GD again. I'll never say GD again. I finally had to smack him on the face to get him so he wouldn't say that. Well, he had picked that up over at the fire station because Gerald and I didn't talk that way, but I knew where he had gotten that. So Gerald went to the station and he told the man there, he said, there are little kids in here and they are very impressionable. And he said, we need to watch our language around them because Skip and Pam had four children and uh, we had the two and these little kids were in there. They were impressionable and at that time, people did try to watch what they said. I was appalled. 